Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Dr. Ruth Gotian, who is in New York. How are you doing, Ruth? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. And Dr. Ruth is the Chief Learning Officer and Assistant Professor of Education in Anesthetology, it's easy for me to say, right? Anesthesiology. <laughs> Anesthesiology, I knew I was going to mess that one up. For her. And she's been hailed by Journal of Nature and Columbia University as an expert in mentoring leadership development and is a contributor to Forbes on optimizing success. And today we're going to talk about high achievers, and um, which is a great subject because I just think um, there are so many people who could be high achievers who never get to that level because they don't have the tools in, in which to do it. So when you when you talk about um, mentoring and coaching high achievers, first of all, what are some of the traits or characteristics you would identify as high achievers having them? And then we can talk about how do you develop those? Sure, so I've actually done quite a bit of research about this uh, doctoral level research about elite high achievers and what, mm -hmm. what has made them so, right? Because we don't know what we don't know. So I wanted to tap inside their brain and figure out what made them so successful. They all came from these very different backgrounds. And I found out that they have four things in common that they have all done. You ready? Yep, go so, for it. Uh, the first one is that they are intrinsically motivated. They have found their passion. They would do this for free if they could. This is what they mm -hmm. were put on this earth to do. They found it and they made a career out of it. That's number one. Number two is they have a level of perseverance that most people don't have. So when they see a challenge, that's not, that's not a stop sign for them. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't, it's, it's just a barrier that they know that they're going to get over, around, under, through it. They will get to the other side. It's not a question of if, it's a question of how and when. So right. that's where they put their focus. They control what they can control. The third thing is they have a really strong foundation. So they are constantly, even though they're successful, they have won Olympic gold medals and they have won the Nobel Prize and they have been to space as astronauts. I mean, these are the people who I've interviewed and spoken to. They are still, they have this very strong foundation. So the physician scientists, th those who are trying to find a, a treatment, a vaccine mm -hmm. um, for COVID right now, plus every other disease, um, they are still designing their own experiments right? They're still cognitively still doing that. Mm -hmm. The Olympic athletes, they still do the same drills you would see in a junior high gymnasium, yeah. right? And we've heard Kobe Bryant has always been yeah. doing that, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is what they do, right? They, they still, they have that strong foundation and they keep it strong. They, they don't forget their laurels. They don't forget where they came from. They keep that strong foundation. And finally, the last one, the fourth one, is they are constantly learning and they are constantly mm -hmm. learning in informal means. They're not registering for classes. They are uh, listening to all the people above them. That means people who are senior to them, yeah. junior to them at their level. They will have the water cooler conversation. They have lots of mentors that they talk to. They will listen to um, online discussions, podcasts, YouTube. They will read things not just in their area of expertise, but they have a very, very broad reach. Mm -hmm. So those are the four things that all elite high achievers do, but here's the magic sauce. Yes. You have to do all of them okay. together. together. You can't yeah. pick and choose. So very often you hear, wake up at four in the morning, you'll be successful, read five hours a day, mm -hmm. you'll be more successful. That's throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping something mm -hmm. will stick. If you do these four things together, you are really going to optimize your success. Okay, so let's talk about them individually first and then we, we bring them together collectively. But okay, so motivation, because here's an interesting one because you know, people often say, oh, you know, you gotta motivate, you can motivate your team, you know, motivate them to get more at it. And the thing is, you know, can you really at the end of the day motivate somebody who isn't prepared to motivate themselves or doesn't have some level of self-motivation? Right, so that's tough, but I think what you can do is as a leader is actually help them find where their passion mm -hmm. is. So uh, I've actually developed a passion audit 
for people mm. to figure out what it is they can do. And I've actually made it free to all your listeners if they want. So it's excellent. It's ruthgotian.com slash passion audit. And you can, it'll take you through the steps of how to figure out what it is that you are passionate about. Because the research has shown that if you can spend just 20% of your time doing what you're passionate about, the other stuff won't weigh so heavily on you. Mm. So we need to figure out a way to get people to spend 20% of their time doing something that they are very passionate about. Right. Yeah, and no, and and I and I love that because I mean, and I would uh, absolutely encourage everybody to do the passion audio because I do think that a lot of people go through life every day and they're working hard and they're you know they're doing everything, but they don't they don't know what it is that they're really passionate about. They're doing maybe what's expected of them. They're doing what they think they should you know they're supposed to do, but not what they really want to do. And I think part of it is that don't take the time out to discover what that is. And, and, and I'm sure when people take your audit, they probably might be surprised at the results. That's right. That's right. It, it falls into um, there's three main buckets of the passion audit. First, you list everything that you're really good at. doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you like it or not. Just list everything that you're good at. The second one is list things that if someone took them away, you wouldn't lose right. a minute's sleep over. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're good at it, but you, you can get rid of it and, and you wouldn't be any less happy. And the third are the things that you would do for free if you could. Right. And there might be some things from that first column and it might be things that you haven't even thought of yet, right? So mm -hmm. we had people, when I worked with them and I coached people on, on doing a passion audit, all of a sudden we see, well, they really love doing marketing via social media. Well, right. have you thought about doing that for your department? Mm -hmm. Oh, all of a sudden now you're doing the social media for your department. You love what you're doing and the other stuff you need to do doesn't, fa doesn't seem so burdensome because yeah. you get to do the good stuff. Exactly. Exactly. I love um, the, um, years ago, Larry Winget, who's one of those motivational speakers, he, he did one thing where he said, you know, when people were saying like, oh, you know, I should be happy. I want to be happy in my job, uh, love of my job all the time. And he said, he said, I hate 95% of my job. He goes, you think, you think this, you think this here up on stage is my job. No, this is 5% of it. That's right. He, and he said, the rest of it was, you know, getting it, organizing it all. He said, but I love the 5% enough to put up with the 95. I agree. Yes. As someone yeah. who does a lot of public speaking, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's the least and, of what we, it's the least time that we spend, but it's the most yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. And, and I think just the other thing on motivation, I think sometimes people, when they think about motivation, maybe they do sometimes compare themselves to these like, you know, people who are, who are perpetual motion and like always up. But motivation, I mean, it, it manifests in different ways. That's not, a, that's not appropriate. And it's not going to right. be the same fit for everyone, right? That's right. Absolutely. Um, and it, 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 it rises and, and lowers, it wanes throughout the day as well, mm -hmm. right? Throughout the day, throughout the week, and we all have bad days, right? <laughs> so don't worry about that, but just remember if there's a part that you would do for free if you could, that's yeah. your intrinsic motivation. You know, I, I used to run a combined MD-PhD program. This is an eight-year mm -hmm. program for really the creme de la creme, and it's hard. I mean, it is a eight year sprint. It's not a marathon. Right. It is intense. And every so often they get sort of down on themselves because it's hard. It's really, really hard and isolating. And sometimes they question if they want to continue. And I yeah. would literally pull out their essay to medical school. This is why I want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. I said, read this. This is why you're doing this, right? So some people, sometimes we just need little reminders of why yeah. we do what we do. So behind me, there's a jar with folded post-it notes. And that was given to me by former students as mm -hmm. a gift. And in it are just messages of gratitude and tips that they learned that they will take with them for the rest of their lives. And the reason I keep it there is when I have those bad days, that I question why is it that I'm doing this, I will open that jar and read those notes as a reminder 
and I get my intrinsic motivation right back. Uh, that's fantastic. And I, and I think a great example of, uh, yeah, people need to find those little stimuli, if you like, that can help them in those, in those, mo those tough moments when they need what we're going to talk about now is is perseverance and uh, and let's face it okay and perseverance is not a very popular topic these days because we live in this easy shortcut culture where everything is supposed to be instantaneous and instant gratification and, and as i said you know there's a shortcut for everything and everything is you know truncated uh, so tell me explain to me a little bit more about perseverance and how we can help people realize that it is still an incredibly important thing to have and, and there is no shortcuts. There, there is no shortcuts, but we tend to weigh ourselves with things that we cannot control. Mm -hmm. And there's, yeah. there's something in adult learning um, and organizational psychology that's called your valence. Do you have a valence of Teflon or do you have a valence of Velcro? Velcro mm. means everything is going to stick to you. But if every negative comment and every bad situation is going to stick to you, it'll eventually weigh you down. But if you're going to be like Teflon, where it just glides right off of you, you're going to be freer. And you're going to be freer to be able to focus and focus on the things that you can control because that is where you should be putting your attention. And that is the level of perseverance you need. And if you talk to all of these elite high achievers, they control what they can control yeah. and they don't worry about the other things. Yeah. And I mean, and I think that's a great thing for, for people to just remind themselves of maybe now because people spend a, a lot of time and energy getting very worked up over things that are completely outside of our, uh, their control. I mean, Correct. let's face it, we're in the middle of a pandemic that's pretty much outside of most people's control, but you can certainly control your reaction to it. You control how you operate during it and how your business Correct. operates or whatever. So yeah, no, that's great. And then I like that idea of, of a strong foundation because I'm, I'm, I'm big into martial arts, right? And, and, and throughout my doing martial arts, some days, I'll, some days I'll turn up to class and, you know, my master will have us doing the, the basic stances and kicks that we learned way back at the beginning. And to your point about you constantly do that because you can't do the advanced stuff without continuing to to practice the basic stuff Absolutely. exactly for that reason, exactly for that foundational reason. And the problem being, as we get more expert and at things, the temptation is to sometimes move away from those foundations. That's correct. That's correct. And, and you're right. And you definitely, definitely see that in, in martial arts, you, mm -hmm. you do those katas, you do those moves yeah. because you need that strong foundation. You cannot do the, the bigger, harder things until you can do the foundation in your sleep. Mm -hmm. And the problem with doing it is if you skip on the foundation, you start getting sloppy at it. Yeah. And as you mentioned, Kobe Bryant earlier, yeah, he was legendary for like showing up at five in the morning and he wasn't practicing trick shots. He was just practicing basic drills. Basic drills that you'd see in any junior high yeah. gymnasium. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that, it, and I do think this, it, it, just to emphasize, the thing, this, I think this is important for everybody is to revisit the fundamentals every so often, because I think we are in some way high, hardwired to just think we've moved beyond these things at times and, uh, and to ignore them and they tend to come back to bite us. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> And then the always, the always learning, I love this bit because it also goes with the idea of, you know, you have to kind of be able to self-motivate. Um, the other thing is, you know, um, learning, and, and there's no excuse today, right? I mean, it's not like, you know, your nearest library is 5,000 miles away. I mean, your nearest library is on your, on your phone. Your phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, but oftentimes you'll hear, you know, you'll hear people sort of, or they'll wait around for people to invest in them. Like, you know, my company, my company doesn't invest in training. me. You say, well, that's fine. Guess what? Your company doesn't care as much about your career as you do. That's right. So maybe invest in your own. Learning. And as you said, I think people, confu you know, confuse learning with formal learning. Exactly. And that's why I was so focused on saying informal mm. learning. Yeah. Um, it's not about going to a classroom and signing up for a course. That's great, yeah. but not everybody learns that way. Um, and I think the, the opportunities that have come through, especially in the pandemic, 
have mm -hmm. really just exploded with opportunities to learn. So the first time I ever heard of a podcast, one of my former students came into my office and he had earbuds in his ears. And I said, oh, so what are you listening to? And I was sure he was going to tell me it was music. Mm -hmm. And um, it turns out he was listening to interviews of top scientists, with top scientists. Wow. And I said, hmm, that's really interesting. And then another time he came into my office with a book that he heard someone mention at a conference. And I said, oh, this is interesting. And then I realized, this is even before I ever started this research, they are just learning informally. They heard someone give a talk, they're listening to a yeah. podcast, they're reading a book. Now during the pandemic, the number of online interviews, I mean, you could just sit there all day and listen to these online interviews and listen to podcasts. And then there's free events, LinkedIn Learning through the mm -hmm. month of September. Yeah. Their top 20 courses are free. I mean, there is really no excuse if you want to learn. Um, and the great thing about things like podcasts is you can do two things at the same time. Right? Yes, you yes. can listen to the podcast and take a walk. So it's not as yes. if you have to stop everything. <laughs> You can make dinner yeah. and listen to a podcast, which is what yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I do is I, I actually listen to and um, watch podcasts when when while working out in our home gym because much as I yeah. love doing martial, I love doing martial arts. I don't like working out the same, you know, as much yeah. as as that. So I find it a fantastic way of because if I get so engrossed in the podcast, I start to get to the point where. I desperately want to finish the podcast. Yes. So that forces yes. me to stay exactly. <laughs> out longer. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the key is finding the ones that you really click to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and one of the parts of adult learning is that everybody learns differently. So some people yeah. would prefer to read, other people would prefer to talk to someone, other people might like podcasts, somebody else might like to draw it out. So you need to figure out what works best for you and then use that medium. And the best way to figure it out is try a bunch of them try and see what resonates with you. Exactly. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's, and it's definitely, if ever there was a time to experiment and invest in yourself, this is the time. You may never get an opportunity like this again to develop new habits. I hope we never get an opportunity like this. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. That's good, good point. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so hopefully we don't, so please take advantage of this yes. one right now, you know, cause you have to find some, you know, you have to find some, uh, some opportunity and everything. And if it's an opportunity for self-development, at least that's, that's something. That's right. So let, so let's recap again, because as you said at the beginning that the secret sauce is not doing one or two of these well, or paying attention to one or two of these, it's, it's doing all four. So if you want to just give a quick recap for people. Sure. So the four things that you need to do, and you need to do them in unison, is the first one, find your passion. Find what you are intrinsically motivated, what you would do for free if you could. The second one is perseverance. What challenge doesn't scare you? It's not a question of if you will overcome the challenge, it's how and when, and that's what you focus on. The third one is have that strong foundation. And the last one is you are constantly learning and usually through informal means. So you got to do them all together. Yeah, no, I, th I think this is such, it's, it's simple, straightforward uh, advice. But do let me caution you, simple doesn't equate to easy. That's so, correct. <laughs> so you do need to actually be, invest some time and energy in these things. And you said, uh, and we'll put this on, all of Ruth's information will be in the bio below this, uh, below this video and the link to the passion audit. But I would really encourage you. That sounds fantastic. I, I might even do it myself. I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's a great thing to, you know, revisit. Because here's the other thing, Ruth. Right? Your passions change over time. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I definitely tell people to redo yeah. this, right? Because I think what we have learned from the pandemic are things that were important to us before are not yeah. important anymore. We have new things that are important and new things that we're excited about and new things that we're passionate about. So once uh, for those who are um, looking for new work, for those who are thinking yeah. about adjusting their work, how can you bring in these new passions? Because one of the things when we get back to our new normal, we need to pivot, we need to be creative, we need to find new ways of doing things. And this is a time for you to take everything that you've been informally learning over these months and put them to use and show people what you're made of.
Yeah, fantastic. All right, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Thank you so much, Dr. Root, today. This has been fantastic. Uh, and I'll see all of you for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.